Welcome back to my nice and toasty 75 degree greenhouse. <laughs> It actually is a beautiful day here. It got up to around 65 today, so definitely feeling like spring. We're getting teased around here in Arkansas of the spring weather that is hopefully right around the corner. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I thought that you know, we would just have bad, bad weather. This time of year of uh, February is usually when we start seeing our winter weather. We had that crazy little random ice storm, but other than that, it's just not been that cold. Um, and so now that it's starting to be like 60, it was even 7 degrees the other day. I'm like, no, 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 winter, you do not get to sneak back <laughs> and show your face around here. Uh, I am like full-blown spring mode, which is why I wanted to bring you guys in my greenhouse today. And also, this is going to be probably a pretty quick video, but I wanted to give you guys just some practical tips. Now, something I get asked often is, how do you stay organized? Um, how do you stay organized with seed starting? When do you know when to start your seeds? Which I did a video on that a few weeks ago. I'll link it up here for you guys. Um, but really, efficiency is key. If you want to have a successful farm and garden, you have to be efficient. And I, I don't say that in a you have to do this thing, right? Because you can just plant willy-nilly. You cannot have a system. You can by all means do that, but it will affect the efficiency of how you grow food and how you produce food. So when I say these things, know that my heart is pure and I mean it in a, in a way of like, I wanna help you, right? I wanna help you succeed. Um, and efficiency may not be something that you're after, but you don't want to waste all this time starting seeds or even spending money buying seeds to plant them in your garden and not get the yield that you could have or maybe overstart and overplant and overcrowd or, or whatever that may look like. And so know that when I tell you guys these tips and tricks, it comes from a place of really just wanting to help you better understand how to put these efficient systems in place on your farm because I know how much they have impacted how I farm and just the production on my farm uh, honestly I mean just before I turned on this video I harvested a nine pound 14 ounce cabbage I will pop the photo um, and video in here so we'll take a little quick break you guys go harvest that cabbage with me and then we'll come back all right I just set my scale to pounds and ounces use two hands here set her on there oh <laughs> my word that my friends is a nine pound cabbage holy smokes But I was able to grow such beautiful cabbage because I grew them efficiently. I grew them with good systems. And so I really just want that to kind of be a testament of why this matters um, and why it is important. So I'm gonna give you guys kind of an exclusive um, of, of what I'm doing. You're getting a real glimpse into my personal life. You guys know we are co-farming with our friends who happen to be professional farmers. Um, and so Sean at Mindful Farmer is farming with us this year. He came from uh, organic production farm that he managed for several years and so a lot of these systems came from him and he taught me a lot of these systems. I've also read a lot of Elliot Coleman and Ben Hartman books which are very uh, lean farming, efficient farming and it really just kind of shifted how I viewed uh, running my farm. <laughs> and the cool thing is too, I think for me as, an, as a uh, creative and as an expressive person, when I thought about getting organized, it seemed boring, right? Like, well, what's the excitement in that? And that's honestly kind of how I viewed it is like, I am way too expressive to be doing things by the book. But what I have found is by creating these systems, I'm growing food more efficiently and it is allowing me to be much more expressive um, with just taking that food into the kitchen and cooking it and being able to do all these different things with it. And so I've learned that for me, um, efficiency is just something that we've really tried to strive for on our farm um, and just continue to improve over the next year. And so behind me, I have got a whiteboard here. So the sun is not really working in our favor, so I'm probably gonna take you guys off the tripod and give you a close up and explain to you what this looks like. But uh, this is just a really nice uh, glass whiteboard. I have uh, three of these, and this is a system that we also used uh, on our old farm. And so this will be in here, um, and it's for all the things that I need to start between uh, February 11th, so I just started those, all the way until April 15th. 
we will also have another one of these um, in the high tunnel and we will have another one of these in the seed starting tunnel and it is going to keep us on point on when we need to be uh, starting things, transplanting things, direct seeding things, um, what they're for. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of deep dive into this, show you guys this one really, really efficient, practical tip that's going to make gardening for you, hopefully, uh, so much easier. All right, guys. So up here at the top, we've got crop, seeding date, size, number. Um, we have these kind of abbreviated uh, for different things. So TP is for transplant, uh, DS is direct seed, and TS is tissue culture, uh, which would be things like uh, dahlias, bulbs, uh, rhizomes, sort of like ginger and turmeric, uh, potatoes, things like that. And then we have notes. And so what we did is we color coordinated this. So the pink uh, marker is for all of our flowers that we need to start. And then the brown marker is for all of our vegetables. And then you'll notice we've got some blue thrown in here. And the blue is everything that we are doing for the plant cell. And so that's really one good way to kind of keep yourself organized is if you need to quickly check your chart, oh, when do I need to start flowers? Instead of reading through everything, you'll just go to whatever color you have chose. Um, and it works out super, super nicely. So we have here the crop. So we have Craspedia. We've got Rutabecca, we got Echinacea, we got Helia, we got uh, Oryngium, a bunch of things I'm probably butchering. We have Kale, Kohlrabi, Cabbage and Lettuce. We started those things uh, last Friday, which we also, if you'll notice, have ourselves set up to where every single Friday um, until April 15th we will be seeding seeds. So that is the day we've chose. Um, so we put our seeding date over here, then our size, and you'll see here that we have mini blocks. And so mini blocks um, are what we're doing right here. And so we will be up potting from this, uh, but right now this just took up the least amount of space. Um, so that's what we did. And so we have that over here, the mini block, the number. So we're starting 40, 20, 20, 20, 20. Uh, we're gonna be transplanting these all out. Eventually I just started using that a uh, short version of that. Then we have our notes and you can see here it says main garden, cottage, cottage. So that's cottage garden. Um, I've got here short bed, which I know we've got tunnel uh, down here. So now we know not only the variety that we're starting, the date that we're si starting and what size, how many, if we're transplanting or direct seeding and then where it's going. So this is really just kind of clean lined our production for starting seeds. All right, so this is a pretty efficient system. We know exactly what we're starting, when we're starting, uh, what supplies we're gonna need as far as what we're starting them in. Um, we also know how many we're gonna be starting. We've got all of the specs we need on this board right here, which is amazing. How did we get to this? How did we know, right? Um, so what we did is we took out all of our seeds, which we had already when we had bought them and they came in. We had two different boxes and one said uh, cool season and one said warm season, meaning things that we were going to be starting and sowing uh, now and sowing early in the spring and then things that we would be starting in the summer uh, for fall harvest and things like that. So we went ahead and separated them out as the order started coming in, which I do think is helpful because it just kind of always keeps you one step ahead. And then what we did, we gathered in the living room and we spread out all of our seeds. We gathered our flowers, we gathered our vegetables, we gathered our herbs. And then we went through and we started figuring out the back of the seed packet. And then what we did is we kind of lined up the weeks. All right, this is, you know, February 11th. This is February 18th. This is February 25th. This is March. And we kind of set up a system on the floor uh, in the living room. And I had mentioned in that video that I tagged earlier, um, knowing when to plant. It's all the information you're going to need um, is one, going to be your estimated last frost, uh, but then also the information that's going to be on the back of the seed packet on when you need to start these things. Now, now we did alter this some uh, because we already have snapdragons started now. Then we've got snapdragons in the Roman numeral two um, in a couple weeks from now. So we'll be growing several successions of that. Um, so that would have been slightly different versus the original uh, start date that would be on the back of that seed packets. So that's something too is you really need to figure out are you wanting to do succession of these? So we have um, on our lettuce, for instance, that we are gonna be starting lettuce from here on out every single week. And we will continuously be harvesting and planting, harvesting and planting, 
hopefully until it just gets too hot that we can't. Um, and we're gonna be using that lettuce as fillers too. If something died, we'll be able to just pop a lettuce or spinach in there to replace it and kind of just fill any voided spots in the garden. So that might be something to think about too. Um, if you have space that you wanna utilize, think about just growing lettuces. They're super easy. You can just be starting them every week and the transplanting, harvesting is a really easy process as well. So after we had laid everything out and figured out, we just, I didn't have post-it notes, so I do recommend keeping rubber bands and post-it notes on hand. It's just kind of really handy as a gardener. Uh, believe it or not, it's one of those things you do use a lot. We grouped them all together and we wrote the date. So this group is February 18th, so I know on Friday I'm gonna grab these and I'm gonna start them. And then the next week we have these grouped out. I'm gonna start them and plant them. And then we do that until we get all the way until April 15th. Now our estimated last frost date is the, eight, is the 8th. And so you might think, oh my gosh, I mean, there's a large stack of seeds here. What are you starting? Like everything should be in the garden. That's not necessarily true, you guys. There's a lot of liberty in this. This is a lot of our ornamental grasses that we're growing. Um, we've got some Cosmos. We've got um, all of our like, we're gonna be doing another round of cucumbers. We've got beans. We've got summer squash uh, that we're gonna be starting and stuff like that. And so this should just keeps you super super organized um, there's really no guessing in it at this point you just go and grab your stack on the day with the supplies you need and you just knock it out